Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Raising Star Seeds. Heidi and I are so excited to be joined by John Paul Rice today. He is, I would say, one of the ultimate, uh, I don't care if you cancel me, I'm not afraid to pivot and go where my heart's being led to go. Um, independent producer, used to live out in Hollywood. Um, yep. or as Jim Brewer just, I was watching a podcast with you and he called it Ego Wood. Um, <laughs> so That's we, their God. Uh, we are so excited you're on. And I found out you're, you just live three hours from me here in South mm-hmm. Carolina. You're, you're a Carolinian now. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I sought refuge back in my roots where I grew up in Georgia and Kentucky. And now I am in South Carolina. Oh, beautiful. So. You, you came on my radar just a couple years ago, 2020, I think is when your video went viral. You just did a yeah. live. August. Instagram, I think it was, mm-hmm. and about thirty minute rant. Um, you called out Hollywood. You, they, Amazon took your movie A Child's Voice down, which everyone's must see. It's a must see. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just shared your 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 thoughts, which hit one hundred and fifty million views. I think it was, and I just re- remember being in Hollywood myself, going, "I can do this. We can do this. We can flip it light. Like there's." They're out there. They're here. I found the others. And then I've been stalking you ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Successfully so. You, yeah. <laughs> you don't works. want to encourage that behavior. No, 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 not at all. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> Wonderful conversations. Yeah, no, we really have. And, um, uh, you know, it's weird. I, I, I do want to speak to that for a second, not to embellish on that moment, but... That was, um, I'll, I'll go to the mat and the grave believing that that was divine timing 100% that day, because let me just say, I watched how all of that came to be and that was not pre-planned. Um, I had 700 followers on Instagram. I had a couple, maybe five or 6,000 on Twitter. That, that wasn't really the, the whole, it's not the point of it. Um, it was that it was an unscripted moment. It was not premeditated and it just flowed out of me 38 minutes of a live that I, I just intended to talk about censorship. And then it turned into this whole thing about basically what a lot of people said is you said everything that we've all known, but you said it in such a way that no one had ever said it that way before. Mm-hmm. And it was delivered in such an authentic way because you were the embodiment of that part of Hollywood, plus your own child abuse as a child and putting it all together in a very digestible way that also had spiritual ties to it, which was talking about a creator of of all, a father of all, and us being all of his children, its children, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to take it to a higher level rather than to say, all of this is just horror and, you know, gut wrenching and terrible and, and, and tragic. And then trying to say, but this is where you can heal. This is where we can go that we don't have to be involved with these people. And when you stop listening to them, if you stop taking the program and that they give you every day, the people on TV who are giving you news are actors who are true believers on the stage of the world lost and controlled within the program and the matrix, which is the dualistic system, which means that in one hand, yes, the left does all of this and more. And that's easy to point out when you're not in that. But when you're on the outside and all that you're receiving from it and saying that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Well, yes, all of that and more can be true. But if only your response is in relation to the falsehood to begin with, then you're really not free. And, and that's what I was saying in that video is that the, the, they use, they do all of this behind our back. And then they keep these people in front of us to turn the dials back and forth, making us vote for them every two to four years. And look at what's happened. It's a desperate attempt in the midterms. We've got to, the Republicans have to win. My God, if they don't, this country's going to hell in a handbasket. You see what I mean? It's like they created the conditions for you to which make you desperate for authority and craving it. 
on such a level that if you're, you, I mean, just look at it, like, forget Trump. I don't give a damn about any of it now. I, I, I did then, but I had to let it all go. It's like, if you're looking for authority to solve a spiritual equation, you're screwed. Period. Um, because this is the man, the world of the unconscious man who is seeking to have power and authority over others. And in that process, he or she, no matter what their desires are, is from the activist all the way up to a global leader, is responding from their own understandings according to what previously occurred. So their unconscious, conscious attention. So their awareness of the, their unawareness is what is dangerous. They don't know what we truly are, yet they're seeking it out at such a level, even at the Luciferian level, which we can get into today, is seeking to understand what love is. Not because they're kind and loving and caring about it, but because it's a power and an essence and a force that comes from beyond this place. And they know that, and it's very upsetting to them that they cannot extinguish it. Because they seek to understand it, but they, in understanding it, they seek to control it, and in controlling it, they'll destroy it. Invert it. That's that's really what this is all about. Well, because so many of them, they actually can't experience the genuine emotion of love. They can't Correct. experience it, and that's why they hate it. They were denied that as children, and this is where it all goes, and this is why people get so messed up with this. Okay. I can tell you this from my own experience and no one has to believe me, but if I gave you a rap sheet of my mother and father, it would be in parallel design to Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and Ashley. Okay. Now my parents were not presidents. They were not leaders of institutions. They were business people. They were the rest of us mm -hmm. in the world. All of this unconscious behavior, all of this child abuse is the program coming in and distorting the divinity that we're all born with. These people at the very top know this. That's why they do this to their children. They, they, disasso they create disassociation disorders, fracturing the mind, creating altered personalities. These are all trauma-based responses. Trauma-based mind control is ritualistic in the fact that the children, see, this is what makes it work. Children are born divine. And what does that really mean? Mom and dad are God. Truly, they're God. They rule their sky with their faces above the child mm -hmm. in a, in a psycho-hypnotic state. It's, it's, it's psychedelic hypnotic state that the child is in. It, it can see beyond matter. We don't understand that. The child doesn't understand that. It doesn't have the awareness to understand that. But the child is pure. It's completely God essence consciousness with no time understanding because there's no there's time understanding beforehand this gets a little nutty but there's time understandings beforehand which came in with the soul and its life right but the human embodied experience is one that um, is both with the soul and its intelligence as well and it's the trauma-based mind control is so important to them because you're breaking the connection to God. Um, my friend, Jay Parker, who's an SRA survivor, I hope maybe one day you'll have him on his show. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, there's no reason why you wouldn't, but if he would come on your show and talk to you, he could tell you about the Illuminati. He could tell you about the Satanist because his family was that. And he grew up in Arden, Delaware, next to the Bidens. And they hung him upside down for 18 hours and put a car battery into his body so that he would call out to God as a child and God would never come and save him so they could make him not believe in the father of all. Um, they know what this place is. They know what we are. They're frightened as hell to lose control. And so right now what's happening is there's their timing and then there's the divine timing. And of course, right now, everybody's paying a major price for all of this crap that's going on in the world. But the reality is they're just filling it with our stories, with psychological stories to make us conditioned to believe against Russia or for the Ukraine or against the anti-vaxxers or for the mandate. You, you see what I'm saying? It's just endless, endless authority dividing and conquering people over and over again. Mm -hmm. The only way that they can do this is by playing into our fears. 
our fears of our past, which have nothing to do with the reality of now, but it's memory recall. That's what trauma-based mind control is all about, is being able to recall the memory of the past and associate with a new reality. Because when you're traumatized as a child, what happens in the moment of the fight or flight that comes in, you disassociate what your body is feeling from what your thinking mind is thinking. And that's the only way you can really survive. If you, if you have a near death experience, like I did as a child, you go outside of your body and you black out, you know, you don't remember, but you come to later and you recall the feelings of all of those things. And the, you're not quite, you're having to, basically you're having to go back in time to re replay events going forward that caused you to come to this moment of, of, um, understanding. The understanding is the limitation of our choices. And when you go and you scale this outside, like, okay, John, that's all MK ultra. No, no. On a live scale, your mother and father came into this world of inversion as well as you did. And their program of inversion after being raised by parents from two world wars and a great depression, where they all had PTSD coming back to America and the rest of the world, having children with PTSD that wasn't diagnosed and alcoholism along with the physical and sexual abuse of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And, you know, they, and the conservatives go back to that era and say that was the golden era. That was the, uh, the nuclear family. That's what we all need to go back to. That's bullshit. Because the truth is, is that the CIA was able to come in in the 1960s and totally break apart the family through social cultural engineering because those bonds in the previous time had been already separated, but it was all underneath the surface. This is the illusion. This is the deception of the Luciferians. It's all going on underneath the surface versus the presentation on the outside, which is the smiling face on the news. Okay, it's all the same thing. So what you realize is that what they're doing in this time is they're awakening everyone, right? There's an awakening of knowledge. There's an awakening of truth. You see all of it. They're allowing you to see this. This is, this is I'm telling you, this is not by accident. This is by design. They're allowing you to see all of this stuff for a desired outcome. Why? From WikiLeaks to now, you've had six, seven years of information on human trafficking and the elite doing these things to children. And it's all been about conspiracy on top of that. So you have the WikiLeaks and the Q movement coming in, right? And painting these pictures. Now I'm not saying they're false. It could be totally true, but what are they showing you today that is hitting with you in the news? Transgender agenda, pedophilia, Hunter Biden, Supreme Court justice, Disney, all of your institutions coming online with all of this crap, right? And people having to make decisions about things that they were not ever thinking about or prepared to debate. But for what, what purpose? Well, if you take it on the pedophile kit, which most people won't care, but I'll tell you it's, it has an agenda. You all don't know that they've planned this for 50 to 60 years ahead of this time. And coreysdigs.com is the place where you need to go and look up the transgender agenda. And you will see that they've been planning this since the 1940s and 50s after Nazi Germany. Yes. Okay. To do this to children. This is not, this is not false. This is true. Okay. So we're here now and we've always had, I'm just saying this, like we've always had transgender. We've had transgender since sixties and seventies. Like that, that was kind of like in this, in the disco scene and toot toot, Hey, beep, beep, you know, like all that, you know, the, the, the songs and, and um, you know uh, I mean, there's plenty of songs in the sixties, seventies. that had this now that's not the point. What I'm saying is that it's always been here with us, but why is it, why is it being raised as an issue now? Because they're marrying it with children, mm -hmm. right? They're putting it together with children. So Alec, primetime Alex Stein, who I love the guy. I mean, he's a friend of mine. I, I'm not like, I've been on his show and I like him. But him going down to a Texas drag queen show and, and showing that and highlighting that and calling all these people psychopaths and their parents, you know, the kids, you are taking a small thing and you're blowing it up on yeah. social media and you're amplifying it and causing people in a time where 
They're pissed off at Biden. They're pissed off at gas. You see what I mean? Like all of this anger goes somewhere is what I'm telling you. The trauma-based mind control is not just programming outward. It's triangulation. It's what child, what, what abusive parents, narcissistic abusive parents do to their children is they put them in contention with each other so that they have to win favor. So they have to attack each other to then win favor back to the parent, to appease the parent. Most people don't see this, but this is how child abuse works. When people come up in multiple family, you know, families with multiple kids, you hear this all the time. Oh, you know, I had a brother that did this, but I turned out okay. Or, you know, the majority of it, oh, well, yeah, that happened to my sister, but that didn't happen to me, right? And, and there's all these different stories, but what they don't see is the underlying issue is that there was a timeline. And when this child was born, and this is where the parents were, emotionally, psychologically, financially. When this child was born, this is where they were. And it was a boy, it was the first boy versus the girl. And so all of the psychology of the previous program of the inversion that they grew up in, that their parents grew up in, they are now scarring on their children because they're ill-equipped to deal with the realities of this life. And this system, as you see with COVID, I'm just, this is, I know I'm going really fast here, but COVID is a metaphor to the same thing of our rotting institutions. All of this unconscious behavior has created the trust and authority that we have delegated away over time, our natural divine born in gifts. They have to do this over millennia to convince consciously that this all is existence, but they can do it in your entire lifetime where you betray yourself. That's what Satanism is, to turn away from yourself, to turn away from your true self and say, well, your true self is the thing that you really want. It's all your indulgences. It's the seven deadly sins that you're going to anchor all your trauma-based mind control on. We're going to give you a death program and we're going to add sex and drugs to fuel it. And we're going to give you virtue and all of that by giving you free pornography and calling that free speech, right? And then we're going to give you human trafficking. And then we're going to say, well, the pornography to the human trafficking, by the time you get through all of that, it's going to be a right-wing issue because at the end of the day, there are victims involved. Right. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> this, this thing goes so deep, how the identity of your victim self is the thing that will keep you in perpetual prison of authority. Totally. If you look at, if you look at political identity alone, that, that should give you a clue. You're a constant victim in a system. So basically it's a depend, it's a codependency that's created by the abuser that basically, like, look at the progressives, they're coming back to government wanting more of centralized control in a time where tyranny has reigned. So they're arguing for Medicare for I'm just I, I don't, I, this is not where you need to argue with people. But you're arguing for Medicare for all at a time where the government is going after you and wanting to inject you with things that they haven't even proven are safe to you. And you're wanting the government to come in and take care of you. It's like, oh, my God, the level of cognitive dissonance there is off the charts, but don't think it's just about them. They are a symptom of the program. They didn't consciously do this to themselves to deceive themselves. I was a progressive. I was a Bernie Sanders supporter in 2015 and 2016. Why? Because he had an economic populist message until he turned into identity politic, you know, uh, liar in terms of like, or deceiver. And then I had to go with Trump, right? And I didn't want to go with Trump. And I, and I took every, and, and not because I didn't like the guy or anything. I was like, I had to be convinced that, oh my God, the left has really become this. Yes, it has. It has been this way for a very long time, but the mask is finally coming off. But what the Republicans and the MAGA and all of that don't see is that four years of a fake news tyranny where people thought they were going to die under Donald Trump well, it came to be true in year four with COVID. He killed their mother and grandmother, right? Okay. So then that four years of fake news tyranny created the real authoritarian power as the pendulum shift in their mind to come after all of you for having threatened their lives. Right. And now what are you going to do in response to them when they want to get rid of you as an existential threat? What do you think the response is going to be from the right? with all of this perversion out there hmm. Hmm. to keep it going, hmm. yeah. to make pedophiles victims, to oh. be a victim class. 
The victim class, the division, the amplification. Mm -hmm. And the world of Satan. That's basically what it all means. And it's not the left doing this. It's the right and the left doing this yeah. together to each other because they're in perpetual contention, false billionaire position, false billionaire position. And all of us have to make our beliefs based on those understandings in opposition to falsehoods, mm -hmm. false inversions of truth, yeah. both of them. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to be searching for the missing link in that because there is no triangulation other than authority to go to. That's it. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, we, okay. We discuss, you know, we discuss on, on the show uh, a lot how all of our institutions are all going to be collapsed. They're in yes. Because the, you know, since the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, it's all about when the human is in a space of survival mode, mm -hmm. scarcity of funds, scarcity of food, scarcity of homes, scarcity of car, you know, where we're constantly in this survival mode and then the breakdown of the nuclear family, that is you cannot have the moment to go within to discover your own self. So mm -hmm. when you're constantly seeking outside of yourself because I'm just trying to survive, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to pay my bills, I'm just trying to raise my kids up put food on the table mm -hmm. then you don't have time to have that inner reflectory relationship with yourself seeking that connection and right. that's so that's why there it's you know you brought up earlier at the beginning like the the midterms two years four years it's that as Heidi like the loose fest begins because mm -hmm. it's another distraction and it's all a form like you said of trauma 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 so the brain can't activate Right. You can't, you can't imagine new possibilities outside of the framework that you're given that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So in other words, because people, I mean, I, I, I've heard these arguments before and, and I, I had to be really solid about this, at least with myself. I couldn't go around convincing everybody this is the way you need to live. You got to live the way you, you, you know, like, like you and I, and all of us, we have this time and space to be able to talk. And we, we're going to, when we finish this, we're all going to go back to our own lives as is everybody else who's listening to this and then try to apply this somewhere. Right. Because their time and space and where they live, they got kids, they got, other, it's like, how, how do I get out of the matrix when I, I'm so integrated? Like, and that's where it frustrates people. And then they give up. Yeah. Really, they do at a certain point. And I'm going to tell you, people are going to see this. There are going to be people who say, okay, I've had enough. I'm checking out. Like I, I, I'm done. I'm done trying to, to follow this paper chase. You know, uh, the psychopaths doing this stuff to it. You know, like at a certain pace, you got, I'm going to go back to what I know. Right. I got to go back to what I know. Part of what you were talking about, Abby and Heidi, this is the great reset. Mm -hmm. This is the psychological great reset. It's putting everybody into tribes. This is the pre, pre the prequel to the Hunger Games. It's to get everybody into these buckets of understandings and consciousness for which society has been pulled apart. We call it decentralization. We say it's a good thing. We say it's states' rights. It's all that, but it's psychic conscious content that's coming online now that didn't exist before there was a division. So your cities are going to be vastly different in terms of their conscious content, psychological understandings of the world versus more rural areas, just on the whole. It's not necessarily one or the other that you have to choose between, but it's like you got to take up an avatar somewhere in the world where you are and, and be, you know, ready player one. You've got to suit up and go, go to work. And this is what it all means. I mean, we could, we could get through all of this and I, Abby, you, I mean, there's so many good points where this is all going is there's going to be a world of belief and the beliefs that you have to let go. Mm -hmm. So the beliefs that you have to let go of are all the emotional programs that have been brought to you by your corporate sponsors. <laughs> um, it's not just the wokeism. That's, that's really a, a fallacy that people need to look at. It's, it's the idea that conservatism, um, humanity has to blend into a political party, that a revolution has to take place through a political process. Sanders, you know, Chris Hedges actually, and Chris Hedges is a socialist, and I actually met him years ago in LA. Um, I used to like him a lot. I still do, but um, it's very, you know, misled on a certain scale of things. But um, Chris Hedges said it best. He, he was talking about um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Help me back there for a second. Cause I was, I had a lot of thoughts rush in. 
you were talking about how Chris is was going through socialism, and were you were you discussing about how like the the, the different differentiating parties? Well, it wasn't so much about socialism as much as it was he said about the the collective and the state that he, he made an accurate statement about it, and I, I kind of forgot that now, but. He was he was basically talking about our de our dependency, and he was even telling liberals at the time that uh, in the death of the liberal class, which came out in 2011, he was talking about that if liberals really underwent a, a serious a serious self reflection, they would come to realize that all of their institutions uh, are basically making mockery of them. Mm -hmm. And and and. Um, and the danger, though, that I would say is that this is what I was saying for the right, is to base your decisions in opposition off of those falsehoods that are perversions of truth. But don't think that because those are perversions and inversions of divine, that that's, that's the only place where that exists. The, let me put it like this. Um, if I placed... You know, I, I take a hundred Christian men, right, who love their wives, and I subject them to a hundred hours of pornography each. Will they all go back to their wives the same? Right. So when you put this crap in your mind, in your body, it alters your perception of reality. And what that means is that Antifa and BLM can be your political opponent, but what they're summoning spiritually is that energy and that consciousness into being. That's the magic of this place. Psychology is the magic of this place. And psychology in a duality has an inverse impression. So in other words, what I project out to you has an inverse reaction in you. All the things that we're talking about in this podcast it's where you plug into it that, that matters to you. Not what I say, not what John Paul Rice believes, but at the end of the day, your feeling and your memory recall of something that, that rings true in you. That's how this place works. So if they, if they use violence and inversion of truth as a means to activate you know, the falsehood, and, it, and if everybody responds to that falsehood in opposition to it even, then it's really reinforcing things that are not even true to begin with only because you have an ugly face to measure them against, which was also Trump. And that's why the left could be virtuous for four years and now still be virtuous now. I mean, it just, it just goes in cycles. It's cycles of abuse. It's familiar. Uh, it's family. It's gener It's multi-generational trauma. The people who run this place know how all of this works. It's so dense. And that's why I tell people, get out of it, get out of it, get out of it. Cause you'll lose your mind trying to figure it out. You need to pull away and go into what is real, what is right in front of you, what's today. You have the sun outside. You don't have to listen to this crap. You don't have to go on social media. Get, get a sense of what's happening in the world that you're powerless against to affect except in a meme or a post or you're really passionate live. I mean, I'm not saying these things aren't important, but if they're your identity, which mm -hmm. social media is imprinting in a lot of people these mm -hmm. days egoically, then um, you're you're actually even though you're awakened, you're actually in the matrix still. You're participating well, because, in it. Yeah, yeah. What 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 the other side, what these Luciferians, the, the the dark energy understands is that our the human race, we are master creator beings. Yes. Now they've, they've never told us that, and that's why people don't believe that they are. But they correct this, and that's why they play the psychological game. Correct. Because everything that we hold strongly within our visions our emotions we manifest into it so like yes. let's go back to the cern thing from mm. <laughs> yeah ago. why not let's do so, it like, we saw everything was you know negative negative you know like they're gonna open up another timeline another portal mm -hmm. and Heidi was right on top of that like you guys thoughts great things don't go down that loose line correct correct Yep. Well, can I bring up Hollywood too? I think. Oh said, yeah, no, this is all yeah. Well, anywhere you, you want to go. The show, John, about reboots—they're remaking and rebooting everything. That's all you see out there, yes. and it's re-trigger. It's mm -hmm. just re-trigger. Oh, they're awakening too much. Got to hit them with the reboot. <laughs> bring them back down. It really is, and that's what I was saying in the in the in the live that I did two years ago. I was talking, and I didn't get into depth on it, but I was basically saying that you know they. They do all these reboots, remakes, prequels, and sequels. There, there's multiple agendas in all of them uh, in terms of what they achieve. 
Um, there's two things that are really about the reboots and remakes, prequels, sequels. Number one is to take all of your heroes from the past that you loved and invert them and destroy them. Kill Han Solo, kill Princess Leia, kill off Luke Skywalker and make all of their characters weak on top of that, if you notice, especially the men. The men are weak and the divine feminine, which is the empowered woman who doesn't need a man, all, all, that, all that false crap that Hollywood gives you. Because the truth is, is that Real empowerment is love, period. Mm -hmm. And if you have to hate somebody or think of yourself as better than, you're already one step closer to Satan on any level because they are appealing to your inner ego child. This is, this all, like, I'm just telling you guys, this is, I mean, you, not you, but the people listening, this all, all of this, all of this runs through child abuse, their entire game. 100% because think about it like this. And I, I want to say that Abby, imagine you were born today with a mother and father who were unencumbered by all of this crap. Didn't know anything about presidents and history and COVID. And I mean, just go back through everything, all of the, all of the events of your life and the new, both your lived. So here's the thing. There's the news and there's your lived experience, right? Mm -hmm. The news has filled all the content of your lived experience not as you were meant to be, but that they gave you things that you had to consider and think about that were both informative, but also programming at the same time, like violence in the cities. So you, you can't sit here like on a timeline and sit here and say that, you know, human beings, well, a lot of people believe today, more cynically so, that human beings are not to be trusted. This is already being espoused, espoused by Prager University which is Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin and, and Dennis Prager. And I'm like sitting here going, you guys are falling right into this trap. It's like cynicism, a higher yeah, level of cynicism, <laughs> right? So you can't trust like, like it's, it's a, it's a, it's sort of like this disassociative disorder coming online with people, cognitive dissonance being personified on such a level that, everybody's making arguments about things that don't even exist to begin with, like Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade, first of all, there's no right that your government can grant or take away to begin with. Secondly, that was completely false. And thirdly, when they take this right away, it's all based on the, pre the current understandings of things, not the previous things that happened before. So it's inversion, basically. It's a splitting of the two inf infinitely because the understandings are the false attachments to the beliefs and rights of things that didn't that that only came about because somebody wanted to deceive people and control them mm -hmm. and yet think that they had a right and they could say my body my choice but it was really authority coming in and granting that to you and taking it away from you to begin with that's the part nobody sees but that's the time of the veil that is lifting mm -hmm. here's what i'm going to tell you though uh, I do want you to talk. <laughs> I don't want to just keep going. But this is the thing that I want to impart to people is that even though the veil is lifting, understand that everything that has been delivered to us has been done for a future long-term agenda. So what they're allowing you to see today is to imprint this psychological energy on you so that you have future authoritative measures that you will take in opposition to the falsehood that you perceive. These are the polarities. It's not right and left. It's basically a despiritualized program coming online that's going to manifest in the transhumanist agenda. And then there's, and then there's, if you want to consider yourself the enlightened one on this end, there's everything in between mm -hmm. that's pulling with this level of fear based authority, both for and against in opposition to. Everybody's going into elections for revenge. Everyone is going, it's a life and death matter now, right? Mm -hmm. Because the corruption at the corporate, and this is the thing that people don't, uh, I don't think they fully understand. Governments can come and go. Institutions, FBI, CIA can all be dissolved, military industrial complex. But what lives on after that is the music and the mind. And that's really what we're talking about now is that once all of this dissolves and fades away, the music of the mind is going to live on because the psychic mind conscious content 
was brought online in this awakening through narcissistic fears and beliefs. And tyranny was able to gain hold of that because of authority being there to answer the fear to the person who goes, tell me what to do, mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. And when you've been abused as a child and you have destabilized childhood and you have to attach yourself to the outside world, the outside world of authority becomes your mom and dad, whether you understand that or not, whether you know that or not, that's what's happening to all those people, those people that are killing each other in the streets indiscriminately, all of that happened in their living room, their bedroom, their basement, their backyard, their, their garage with their mom and dad or whoever parental adult figures. And you're just seeing the manifestation of it when they are children and now young adults going out and playing that entire world of authority, that false authority, the authority that has betrayed them. The thir- Antifa, same thing. They're trying to save their country. If you really look at it, you ask Antifa as distorted and as messed up, they're trying to save us from this tyranny. When you start to realize that with all their misunderstandings in between, it's all psychic, emotional content that's fueling all of this and belief. And this is trauma-based mind control with all of the programs. This is what MKUltra mind control survivors say. It's like, you all don't realize you have the payload in your little torpedo, which is your head. And you're going out and carrying out that program and everything that they've told you that you believe in you're going to see it when they show it to you. And you're also going to materialize it, manifest it into 3D consciousness into the material world by your movements and your behaviors. This is where World War III is being fought. Anyway, all right. That's a lot that I said. So I'm sure you have plenty of questions and things to say. So let's go for it. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We talk often this, we are in the middle of uh, World War III. It's actually, it's just World War II never ended. Uh, hey that's a good one i like that uh, yeah but this is now the spiritual war Mm -hmm. it's evolved from material into spiritual yeah that's why it's so hard to explain to someone when you say we're at war they're like no no we're not i don't i don't see soldiers in the streets fighting right now in my town Mm -hmm. they they can't understand that it is all psychologically it's it's we're you know a lot of our our viewers and audience we know what's going on in the astral realms the, you know, when, when we're saying we're going to sleep, the things that are being mm-hmm. seen and experienced on behind that veil, it, it's, it's a lot of work going on and we're trying to shift and move and, and it is good. You know, you, we were talking, you know, before we started recording in regards to the, the spiritual movement now to make sure that we're not even within this, as we reject one, that we're not creating another pillar system here where we're giving our authority to someone outside of ourselves Mm -hmm. and and that's always the goal you know i i I work i I know john i so i have clients and i work with them Mm -hmm. and a lot of times their concern is well i'm not meditating enough and or i'm not doing this enough and Mm -hmm. you know everything i follow they say i should be doing this and i it's like stop stop we're not going to be giving ourselves to somebody else's reality and their perceptions it's all going within what works for you what works within your system and knowing that you have the authority for that because outside of these avatars were beautiful powerful creative beings creative beings and you know what's so good for for you john that i would really love to talk about is is the art this mm. that's so needed because mm-hmm. you know a lot of because hollywood you know we we get and understand this psychological mm-hmm. um carnage that's been created there right but we still the human species are psyche needs we need creator beings we need art and music and and so it's not that we're gonna we can't throw it away we need to create new yes that's one of the beautiful things that makes our species so coveted (laughs) right it is, and it, and it really is, is, is that, so, you know, we can talk about the dark stuff for days, you know, and I, I could wax it, you know, in prose, but, <laughs> but the truth is, is that, yeah, you got to come to the other side. And what's the other side is the reality is that they need you. You're the battery, you're the fuel. Um, and the reason why you are is because you're so valuable because all of that energy, if they're able to cull it and move it into their louche, that's basically your non-creative state, right? That's your state of fear. You can never make 
smart decisions out of a state of fear or worry ever, uh, creative ones, at least at that. So when you get into the art of it, and this is really the magic of what I consider um, the basis of what Hollywood operates off of, um, art in the, in the role of the artist in this time and, and in all throughout history has always been a perceiver of the divine. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, like you, you just, you start going through all of the, of the inventors and the painters and the ones that you still revel and marvel in today, despite what, you know, they try to put up in front of you, but, but that, that, that painting of that chair a thousand, you know, 500 years ago, um, somehow speaks to you to this day, that's the divine through their, their lens, uh, echoing and vibrating through color and energy and, and really the material, the, the manifesting through the hands of that, that journey of the psychic content up here is now being presented to you through the hands and the eyes. And this gets into mythology. It goes, I mean, it's just beautiful stuff. Like when you start to unpack all of this, it's abundantly there. It's abundantly there, but people don't see it. It's like doors and keys right in front of them. They can't see them, right? So the artist is the sort of like the provocateur, right? It's the one who poses the question, well, what if, right? What if this? What if uh, instead of uh, a banking system, you know, I mean, like I've just say you could start like, what if it's the banking, but it's the same creative thing. It's like, what if, what is possible? What else is out there out, outside of Coke and Pepsi or Nike and Reebok or red and blue, right? So you've got that world and, and listen, let me just tell you what well, all I'm saying is there that you got that world going on over there. It's been going on for a long time. And it's like the pet cemetery guy. He's going, well, you don't want to go down that road down now. You know, like <laughs> it's not a very good road to go down. You want to go down that road that way. Um, so, yeah, you know that road. Right. And then there's the divine and the divine is for discovery. It's like a child. It's a child playing at play. Right. It's our natural state, actually. If you really if you take away the work and everything else and you put it into like, what are we? We're just people, people together playing out conversations of God and drama of God in, in scenes and, and uh, movie sets, you know, everywhere we go, we go to brunch, we go to lunch or we go to dinner, we go to this movie, but, but it's, it's, it's like a great movie. It's like Casablanca. Casablanca is, is a perfect example of the divine in a film. It is one of the most beautiful love stories of all time because it's about self-sacrifice and about a man who had become bitter and resentful in his life because of the last love that he believed in, which was Ingrid Bergman's character, who left him at the train station that day when Germany invaded France, and he didn't know why, and he hoped to put it away and just bury the memory of that pain, and then she walks into his place in Casablanca with Victor Laszlo, her husband, the freedom fighter, and of course... You know, Rick is uh, is a he's a cynic and he's a antihero, but he's also got the heart of a patriot, which is about freedom and liberty. And she remembered that about him. And she and because and here's what I'm going to tell you this is why art is so powerful. If you go back and watch that movie, you'll see it all. I mean, it's a, it's one of the most wonderful scripts ever written and a film that to this time uh, should be seen by everybody, not because of its nostalgia, but because of its universal truths in there. Um, it's when Ingrid Bergman's character comes to Rick and he's in the marketplace and she tells him the truth for the first time. It's like, I was married to Victor Laszlo when I was with you. And he didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then from that moment on, he gets to know who she is for real. She know he sees her pain and the choices that she had to make and that she really did love him and didn't know what was going to happen to her first love, which was her husband who was in the concentration camp. And then she, she tries to put the world right again by telling the truth and, and it, and it awakens in him, his own inner child to see the love in her for him. And he loves her to a higher level, which is to learn to let her go. And that the world needs her to go with him. And he's willing to risk his life 
because he loves her so much and she trusts him that he will work out a plan that is favorable to her and him. And he does so against the greatest evil, which is the German Nazis that are coming, certainly will kill him. And he will go to jail if he gives up the letters of transit to people because he could have gotten to New York himself where he wanted to go and he said no. Hmm. That's very personal to me, of course, because I get emotional for different reasons. But those acts of love are what change time. Um, Frank Capra, who did It's a Wonderful Life, said, this is a liberal back in the 30s and 40s. He said, you have two hours with him in the dark. You have more power in those two hours than the president of the United States does in four years or eight years to change their entire life. Show them something amazing. Hmm. Show them something they haven't seen before and tell them something true. And they'll, and they'll change their life. He said, drama does not occur on the screen when the actors cry, it's when the audience cries. You go back and read Frank Capra's quotes, you can become an astonishing artist and filmmaker because he learned the truth about the divine in everyone. He even said as much. He said it about, I wish I had the quote in front of me, I'd read it and bring tears to your eyes because he was basically saying, all of us have the divine inside of us. Hollywood was put there. This is what people need to understand. Don't save this town. Don't save this industry. Don't try to resurrect it. Don't try to change it from the culture that it is. It's on its own trajectory, the Tower of Babel and on. It's going to follow itself to its logical conclusion. Make this a new world by creating art that is truthful, that goes outside of the orthodoxy, that does not deal in anti-propaganda against leftist propaganda. You have to come back to the center and the real craft of storytelling, which was lost in this time. There is no storytelling to be had in any of their movies at this point going forward, big budget or small. All of it is an imitation of the same thing 20 years ago. This is all to hold you in the orthodoxy of identity politics and your self-identity and importance. And there, let me, let me be very clear about this. Hollywood's drive in this, no matter whether they fail or not, they're taking this to an idol level worship industry. They will disclose sexual abuse in the industry for the purpose of you reattaching yourself to Ariana Grande. They will tell you about the guy at Nickelodeon who fucked all those girls and, and those boys as well. And it'll be all the names that you know. And by the time it's all said and done, you'll have a stronger emotional attachment to her for the victim that she is. And that will perpetuate the pedophilia and the hypersexualized culture that she represents because she's not changing. Ariana Grande is not changing because she has five to six people in front of her every day who are paid enormous amounts of money to make sure she is on time everywhere she needs to be and that her thoughts are kept within a certain bubble so that she doesn't lose her mind and go outside of that and, and kill herself. Okay. This is the reality of the, the stuff that people don't understand. It's like, these people are mind controlled slaves on a level. You see them doing all these perverse things. This is their childhood coming online personified. It is exactly why it, it is agreeable to them. This isn't, this isn't them choosing to do things like we choose to do things this way or would not choose to do these things. These children are all brought up in families that sexually ritualistically abuse their child. It is normalized. And it gives them divine gifts, of course, that Hollywood can use. I'm not putting myself up there like as somebody special. I would have been the perfect cult leader to bring in the new world order. I would have. I'm authentic. I believe in what I believe. I would have been, uh, if I didn't have the discernment that I did, I, I was surrounded by pedophiles in that den at the very beginning. Um, it wasn't even that, it was the trust. That's how they groom you. It's, it, it, you're a child still until you're like 25 in your brain, okay? In terms of the, the, the switch that occurs evolutionary in all of us. Um, as a teenager too, as a young adult, you're, you're still very impressionable with people who pay attention to you. And if you come from a family where validation included sexual abuse of any form, 
that is going to be an attribute to the people in that town who can anchor that level of abuse on you, whether they're conscious of it or not, or your handler or this or that. They are, this is how the world is. This is, this is all they've known. This is what we do. So in other words, when you're dealing with these people on television, from the media to, to Hollywood, which is an extreme, um, they're living in the world that they live in. They really do live in that world. They're not, they're not, they are standing up there with a script, but they're also putting belief into it. And their feelings are what their authenticity that they have through the trauma that they've endured. They're, it's sort of like, um, it's inversion of the divine. So it's like divine is this way. They invert it mm -hmm. and they come up and they flip it. And then this side that you see is the face that, that, that hides the mask. So there's two. So in other words, there's two masks. There's the mask you see on the outside and there's the mask perceiving itself on the inside. Right. But you can never see what's in the middle of the two. You're blind. Your blind spot is that trauma. It's your Achilles heel. You can't see it. You can't, you can't see what's behind you. So you have back to back, mask to mask, viewing outside, perceiving, getting feedback all out here. And then there's feedback on the inside. And then there's people telling you what that feedback on the inside is. And they're not giving you a way out of it. They're giving you more drugs. They're giving you a boyfriend. So you don't kill yourself like Britney Spears. She was ready to kill herself after that boy from Louisiana was banished from her in uh, Las Vegas. Most people don't know that story. It was reported in the Daily Star years ago. There was a friend of hers who loved her dearly and wanted to marry her and had a storybook fantasy tale that he went out to LA or Las Vegas with her and got married mm -hmm. within 24 hours. And she told her mom, her mom flipped out. They got the lawyer, the manager, the agent all flying into Vegas, separating the two of them saying, thank you very much, see you later, goodbye, here's your plane ticket back. They all laughed at him, mocked him, everything else, told her she was wrong for doing everything she was, made her change her phone number so he could never contact her again. And then she dated Kevin Federline after that. And that was a very, that's a very smart choice, wasn't it? She was one of the saddest people I've ever worked with, I've told people. I love her. I, I fell in love with her. I knew, I knew why I loved her before I knew. I, she was America's every girl. She embodied all of the tragedy. Her mother was a witch, in my view. Uh, her father was a, a selfish monster, but her mom was really the one who fucked her up the most, in my view. I mean, they played a role in both, um, but I'm sorry for cussing like that. But I, when I saw what her mom did to her in the couple of moments that I caught, and I did meet her one time briefly, and she got there was like a darkness uh, over, like she was, she was there, but she wasn't there, you know, and she's performing on stage and she's there, but she wasn't there. And, 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 yeah. anyway, we could talk about this. You probably know way more than I do. Um, so, anyway. so John is how you're explaining with that type of an inversion. So sometimes it's depicted in films where somebody who's gone through a lot of psychological trauma when mm -hmm. they look at themselves in the mirror, they see the back of their head. They can never mm -hmm. see their own reflection. So is mm -hmm. that essentially what they do? All of this abuse, the ritual abuse, is that essentially so like even they themselves, because it's like they're looking at the backs of themselves. They can never have that inner reflectory moment and actually see themselves for what they are. Right. They always have their, their, their major issue is they always have self-doubt to live with. Whereas we have more of a free will choice to do that. Um, or, or we have more of our heart centered in that decision-making. So we don't have the constraints of that. Um, I, I think that what, what we're having to learn in all of this is not our separateness from each other, but really the sameness from the, and I, and I know this sounds crazy, but from the psychopath to the sociopath, to the narcissist, to us, there is a trajectory that occurs uh, on a level where basically like what they're doing to her. So, so let me explain. Having the ability to see the back of your head in a mirror mm -hmm. is because when you were born <laughs> as a child, you had the ability to see in almost every direction. 
what it appeared like in multi directions. Whereas our eyes, as, as the you know, as the eyes change, they get smaller and more focused. And our, our so it's like if you were on psychedelics, and I don't recommend people recre recreationally going and doing this just for the sensation and feeling of it because you could really screw yourself up. But if you were on mushrooms, you would basically see the world almost like a child does. Um, unencumbered if you see that's why I don't tell people to go do that um, because you're basically playing with forces inside of yourself so what you think you're going to see as a child you may have unconscious traumas that will come up and manifest as entities in front of you and then you'll, see you'll be in real trouble so I, I I try to tell people that though um, in the in the part where the the, the child is completely pure um, the child hears harmonies in its ear like angels singing um it feels everything so intensely but not intensely bad it's intensely good and bad right but it's not judged as good or bad it's felt so there's no words there's no thought behind it it's almost cosmic in a sense celestial energy archetypal structures of the cosmos that are in 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 divine order uh, within the child so to your point scaling that up to trauma-based mind control where they can see the back of their head um, basically through the distortion and i would say you could start like at schizophrenia i'm not an expert on this but i could say you could start with schizophrenia borderline personality disorder manic depression and kind of scale upward from there uh, with all of the, I would call it psych, uh, psychological, psychic mind uh, abilities through imagination and perception. I, I know that's, that's very limited in what we're talking about, but I'm trying to like, I'm trying to put it all together conceptually. It's like you're born with the, the, the this is what it all goes back. You're born with these gifts. These monsters distort, distort them for their world to be inverted in manifested as divine feminine and masculine inverted right and then we create children under that inversion and then we raise them up in that invert you know you see what i mean it's it's worlds within worlds that we're creating but the the key is and what you and heidi were talking about is the imagination and so when you have a new thought outside of that paradigm it brings online another program in the field and this all has to do with why they do mind, mind control, because where we are, we're in the world of God in the sense that we have access. Now, you can call it Akashic Records, whatever. I don't go into all these explanations. What I'm saying is that there is divine, universal, cosmic knowledge available to you. And if you look at it from your soul level, even your mind and your heart in the quantum field, your heart in the quantum field can sense things ahead of quote time that you perceive three to four seconds every single human being has this ability okay so and it gets really exciting because what you're doing is you're essentially when you bring a new thought into being it's not just in your mind that it exists it's it's now out in the field of vibration because you've pulled it in so now you've anchored something that's out there as an idea and a concept that you've arrived at the eureka moment right and you say, I did that. And you did, but it worked its way through to get you to the subconscious mind where it became a conscious thought. Now, how that happened, I'm not going to debate that today, but I'm just saying it came into being somewhere, some way. And so if you have a different idea about something, this is where creation comes from. This is where imagination comes from. This is where love needs to be applied with heart intent. If you're going to make and bake a cake that's going to taste really good, You've got to have all of those things. You got to have a love for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You got to not give up because you want it so badly. And you want to put it in the intention of giving, which, which is first to yourself. There's a pleasure that you're giving to yourself when you make something, when you're sweeping that floor, when you're making that bed. If it's a chore and it's viewed negatively, I'm not telling you like, well, you got to go about your day controlling your behavior and all your thoughts about all the things that you don't want to do. No, it's like face them with awareness. Put awareness on the things that you don't want to do. Put awareness on the things that you do want to do. And then, and then, then start deciding rather than just doing and reacting. This is where you start to break the program down. What is my reaction? What is my solution? And where is my role 
in the whole loop because it's always from the outside that this person did this to me, our government's doing this to me, my gas price, all of that and more could be true, but what is your role in how you respond to it and what table you set to invite that to come into your mind and into your life? And if you, and, and people, well, this is simple. It's like, no, that's not going to change all of their world. No, but it's going to change your world. And why is that important? Because in a, because in a world of false beliefs, you're the real thing that stands out that dispels the false belief. You're the, you're the white, you're the white female girl. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, if you scale it down, you're the white female girl that has black friends that doesn't talk about BLM. Right. It doesn't talk about uh, police and race. Just say, you know what? I feel bad because I hear every day in Chicago, every weekend, 20 or 30 people are killed, including children. And these are people with families and mothers and fathers, if they're lucky to have them. And that's not a black issue. The Republican, and I'm, I'm just saying, like, I would, this is how you, this is, you have to come in at a different level. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. Just don't come in at the program level. If you come in at the program level, like I've talked to people here, black and white, where I live in the, the rural south of Georgia, part of it. And I'm moving, you know, I'm moving to South Carolina, but the rural part of Georgia that I've lived in two years, okay, 50-50 white and black, Okay. I've got a, I've got two miles up the road from me. I've got a gun range and a gun store and the people that run it are all 35 and above to 60 white men who were ex law enforcement officials, former sheriffs. Some of them still work for the police force. They come there and work. I guess, I don't know. I don't know how that works, but here's my point. During 2012, when George Floyd came in to all this equation, 11 billion news cycles ago, um, there were these black boys walking in with their AR-15s and their, their pistols and their rifles into this gun shop. Now, I didn't expect anything bad to happen when that happened, but it was like everybody was on a first name basis. Hey, we're going over. To, oh, yeah. See you guys later. See you later, Kevin. Good to see you again. White, black, young, old, didn't matter. Everybody understood. Now, what does that mean? It's because nobody's there to kill anybody. I meet sheriffs, a sheriff in South Carolina, um, well-known, um, Chuck Smith, I think. Maybe you heard his name in Spartanburg. He's been in the news. I met him face-to-face. -face. Unbelievable human being flawed as any one of us is he's got his own understandings about life political differences you know he's a trump supporter and he basically said um when he was 21 years old it was the first day on his job as, an, as a deputy assistant at 21 and he had 10 domestic violence cases that day and he went home to his wife and said i can't do this and she said they need you and he's now been there since he's 50 something now and he told me straight up he says, I have no problem. Like he, he is, he's been around long enough to witness children that he knew. Now he's putting them behind bars. Oh. Okay. As adults. Okay. So this is a man who's seen horror that I know exists. Most people don't. He's seen it up close because he arrives at the, the scene of the crime and he sees what happens. Right. And they call him. He told me, he said, John, I have no has he goes, I have no problem using my gun to take out anybody who goes against God. Now you hear that, and that's that sounds like a really like, well, this guy's ready to kill, you know, anybody that he deems as a threat. And you just go, that's right wing, that's crazy, that's off the rails. But this is the other part that the media will never tell you. He said, without hesitation, he said to me in the same breath, he says, and I hope I never have to do it. That's a man to me. Mm. That's a man of God, because as flawed as he may be in his understandings of things, he knows not, he's not lusting after killing people who have gone too far. He hopes he never has to do it. And that's the way he approaches his life. But he's not, he, he has no mercy for people who hurt children. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I understand this gets really difficult and I would tell you this, but this is really the road to forgiveness and it, and it requires your own individual commitment, which is not something that I can tell you what to do, but my path to forgive my mother and father led to a lifetime of tears. And I would say at a level that my little boy was crying at such a heartbroken level, like for hours, um, not just one time, but many, many times along this way. Okay. So why do I say this? Because I am never going to ask anybody to forgive their perpetrator. And I'm never going to ask anybody to say that, um, you know, this pedophile here, you know, should be forgiven for what they've done or this psychopath or this narcissist, or you, you, you don't, you, you, you yourself can never command to someone else to say this man or this woman who did this heinous act is actually innocent. You're never going to win that argument. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that argument either. What I would say is this is a tragedy because that little boy and that little girl at five years old, that man, when he was five, that girl, when she was five, never imagined this being their plan A in life. Now, you can say there was a set of choices, but I would argue that there were a set of choices that were laid out for them to choose from as children by their mother and father. And we begin to understand this. This is my point. There's not about agreements, but about understandings. Um, in other words, well, let me say this. You don't have to, to understand something doesn't require you to agree with it. Yeah. Uh, that's not a novel idea, but in this time it is because what it means is you understand why are there pedophiles? Why is there transgender uh, programs that are working in society that are taking in the youth and the others. It's not because it's just divine inversions. It has to do with our psychological preconditioned states where these things thrown up in front of us. Yes, they are a program and they're being coming online, being responded to, but there's an emotional psychological content underneath it that is preceding that moment. In other words, I can't put on, on uh, upon you a set of beliefs that you don't adhere to unless you feel it's reasonable to you. You don't hold memories and recall beliefs because they're just thought content alone. They're psychological, emotional embodiments that have a history and a story that is overlaid to them as to why you came to those understandings and beliefs through your self-reflection or any, it, it, it's not, it's not whether you, I mean, narcissistic behavior, the definitive line between that is if you have the ability to pull out and look at yourself a little bit, you know, if somebody says, Hey, you're hurting me. If your first excuse is no, I'm not, you're the one who's hurting me. Right. And then it goes on from there. But, but, but before you get to that point of that self-defense, this is really where our vulnerabilities are all tied into. This is why narcissism and authority right now in this time is so high is because the underlying issue of this abusive system is that these people allow your parents to do it to you first, because that's Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. That's the Easter bunny. That's the tooth fairy. That's where all the magic comes from. Okay. And all Hollywood does is it rides on top of that divine, bending it downward, keeping it contained so it doesn't break free. If you and I and all of us are having this conversation right now, we're the generation that can remove these barriers to enlighten and bring people up unencumbered through the program to know another life exists, another world exists, another reality is possible. If you live the embodiment of that and you give it in the form of care, this is what Mark Passio talks about an ex-occultist, he said, care is the defining difference in this time, which is that care is love manifested into to giving to others. It's not the virtue of the speech. It's not the persona of the life that you perceive. I am John Paul Rice. The people who know me love me and they know me vastly different than you but that doesn't mean you're wrong it just is that we're we're playing a game of illusions and faces 
and we're not looking inside within that all of that power, the cosmic force that we feel powerless against in this world of unconscious men going after power, we feel my divine energies and all my prayers. You know, it's like, I, I keep going, I keep praying, I keep hoping as it keeps coming up to the door, right? But you're praying and hoping and thinking that authority will fail or that authority will change. Taking back your birthright, you know, there's a lot of people who are talking about how they reclaim this time. Well, you're going to have people who are very angry and they want the rich to pay for it. And then there's other people that are angry about it, but that are going to utilize a creative, rational, more loving and imaginative and artistic mind to bring about that joy in recreating that over and over and giving that. And it starts to add up where collectively the vibration, even though the vibration has been pushed down a lot over the last two to three years, right? The only reason why they could get that just doesn't understand. The only way that they can get this time off is by doing that because it was naturally coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we free ourselves from what they're trying to, not just this time of what they're trying to push down on us now, but also what they will offer us in response to this time, man's law versus natural, mm -hmm. then that's really where you're going to see the separation in humanity of consciousness where, and, and that doesn't mean the world's over yet. It just means the world, the new world is beginning. Yeah. That's where we have to look at this. The new world is all of those things that we imagine and more that we bring into thought first through the love in our heart, which is divinely connected to the quantum field of the Holy spirit. These people can only imitate. They cannot create. They have to do AI to clone the real AI. We're the real intelligence. We're the biological intelligence. This is a temple. Start treating your body like one. Your authority is not over other people. It's not us versus them. It's us together. The difference is, is that you can't approach it from the position of so many that have come before, which is very centered on uh, spiritual ego, which is what I was talking about earlier about the cults, mm -hmm. because so many people, if you look at it this way, all of us are children born. We want to feel special. We want to be loved and validated. And we'll, we'll, we'll walk into hierarchies of university and corporations to earn that validation through a system that rewards us. Okay. Gurus are no different. Christ is the ultimate example that I tell people to go to, no matter whether you take it on the literal from the four gospels or the embodiment in the Christ consciousness, because Christ consciousness has been so ill-defined. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's and it and a lot of Christians really get um, nervous about this, and they talk about New Age and Luciferianism. Well, I can tell you, yes, that is true. It can turn Luciferian and New Age. It absolutely can. And I can mm -hmm. this kind of power, if you if you wield it inappropriately, you can do much damage to people, much much damage psychologically to them. See, if you think about it, like desperation, right? And then you go to a different authority, an outside authority, a guru, a savior, a sage, whatever. You're doing so running away to an extent, not because you're wrong to do so, but you need to get out of this poison. And then you find a bunch of other people who feel like you. And all of them have trauma from their childhoods, from what? A world of inversion, not because they're bad people, not because, they, I mean, some of them have really horrific stories that fit into that. But what I'm saying is this love and acceptance thing is really important. Mm -hmm. This love and acceptance can make you feel like the first day you went to therapy with a therapist and spilled your guts and you felt like, oh my God, I got all that off my chest. I'm fine. And then you come to realize that that's, that's your first day of breathing, you know? And, but the, but the point being is that in these cults, um, I'll just tell you the odds are bad that they're going to end well for everybody because Christ is distributive. Christ said, go to the poor. He didn't say, go form a church on your own and just stay there. He said, go and be the church, bring Christ to the needy. Uh, if, if there's anything I can tell people today, if I don't know, you know, everybody in your audience, but, um, 
in the end, I believe if I am to pick a side that I have to stick on, I will end up with all the form the current leftists today and their children. I'll be with them in the end because I know that they're the most programmed and they're the ones that are the most fallen in this time. And they're going to be the social rejects. They're going to be all the things that are deplorable on that side. You see, the duality will give you the language of deplorable, deplorable, uh, Nazi fascist, Nazi fascist, and both see themselves as the good versus the good. That's the whole point of the duality. Yeah. You see, I'm a good little boy. I'm a good little girl. I believe that Joe Biden or whatever it is, it doesn't matter who the names are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong. It's that that's what I'm talking about. It's a psychological. This can be very scary for people. But it should only invite you to want to get to know yourself that much better in such a way that doesn't require you to seek outside of yourself in terms of going somewhere else to find life. You have to make life where you are today in the darkest of places and only love can create the imagination that creates that in the darkest of places to illuminate it. Their illumination is the false one, which is in a world that they created that's dark. So they get to be the light bearers, you know, the saviors of the world that they helped create. And that's the perfect abuser for us, right? Because it's the perfect mind controlled slave. What we created for you now come back to us for the answer. And we can use all our puppets and our institutions and in the new form, which is the transhumanist agenda, the all of that. Anyway, we can go on forever. I want to. I want to just listen to you because I've been talking for almost an hour and or more than that. And I could do that every day. I just crack it up because I had a laundry list of questions. You covered everything. <laughs> oh I didn't have to ask a damn thing. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's understanding that, you know, they, they created the sickness and the cure. So yeah. And, and that's their agenda, you know, and so many in our audience are the parents who understand the divine this energy, that divine energy that their children are coming onto this planet with, and their mm -hmm. whole intent is, how do we protect that? How mm -hmm. do we make sure that, that that's not lost into the matrix as mm -hmm. they get older? And, and that is really the, the focus. Mm -hmm. And you know, when yeah. what can we bring? What can we help as a collective mm -hmm. to continue that connection that we mm -hmm. enter into this plane with? One hundred percent. Being in touch with nature uh, is a big, big one. Bare feet on the ground, 20 to 40 minutes a day uh, in non-pesticide sprayed areas, mm -hmm. grass, even gravel, uh, even, even sand or dirt. Um, ground yourself every day for 20 to 30 minutes. That will take off most of your anxiety. Uh, the electric mag magnetic field of the earth will synchronize with your heart and it will discharge most of those uh, ions. Uh, I, I don't know how it all it works, but it's, it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, is treating yourself as a divine being really, that's really the first start, I think, uh, and really imagining what that is. Mm -hmm. You really need to, because the, the thing is that we're, we're going for big time solutions with mechanical answers and that that's not the way this works. It's got to be a heart centered one that cannot be. It's like this. You just can't stop watching a child happy, you know, a, a little baby, you know, just laughing and giggling and stuff. And it, it automatically just makes you, this is where we're, we're meant to be in, in life in all ways. And it takes your imagination to get you back there to the thing that you were born with, but it's just your imagination. That's the only thing that's been taken from you into a very, you know, uh, if you just look at this time, it's all numbers, data analysis, it's analytical, it's this and it's that, it's this doing this and that doing that. And it's all very literal interpretation. It's all left hemisphere of your brain. Your right hemisphere, as you know, is the imaginative divine feminine nurturing intuition artistry artistic talents the the filmmakers that may be watching this uh or listening to this you know look if you go back to the classics and you see what they did from driving miss daisy which to me did more for race relations than any other movie um because it wasn't preachy mm -hmm. and it was about by the way it was about a jewish woman in the south 
mm-hmm. who was also an outcast like him. You know, they didn't try to make these vanilla one dimensional characters that, you know, this is the good person, the bad person. They just have misunderstandings, you know, that kind of stuff. OK, you want to make those kind of movies? Good. And, and, you know, hang your hat on them. But you really have to dig deep in this one. Uh, I don't you know, movies about human trafficking of children. OK, cool. But what are you telling me about it? You know, if you're going to do like, I'm just saying, and I'm not, I'm saying this to the filmmakers, like, I wish I could talk to as many filmmakers as possible. But the ones that I am able to say is like, look, you got into this field. Why? Because you loved movies. You loved movies that you liked, that you felt about, not what they told you you're supposed to like and what you should go buy and what you liked it. Hollywood has never been the audience and it never will be. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. I said that 12 years ago. I didn't know what I was saying, (laughs) but I knew that the audience was the one that ultimately decided. And you were the one who had to bring to the audience, the thing that was was lacking, that was missing in their life, right? Not the thing that they had seen a hundred times before, but you were going to show it in your special way. You know, in other words, like a lot of filmmakers that making, you know, 20 years ago, were trying to do Tarantino films, ripoffs, right. And call that independent film. And it's the same thing. You're not going to get everybody buying into this right? What I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is for the people that are, that are artistic, that have a story they want to tell, the story they want to make, don't allow the industry to dictate to you what is fashionable and in style and comport, comparting. They are pur- purely going off of created content that fits and suits an agenda and everyone acquiesces around that. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Commerce and reaction. Top Gun Maverick will enable a whole other wave of films like that, that follow similar storylines that have the same kind of, you know, great aeronautic, you know, displays of battles. And I, I mean, I walked out after 30 minutes because I said, I've seen this movie before. There was no story there. There was no story there. And I'm not putting Tom, Tom Cruise is one of the greatest actors that has ever lived. That doesn't mean he's a great human being, but he's one of the greatest actors that ever lived. He is one of the most dedicated people. I worked with Denzel Washington. I worked with Mel Gibson. He has the same level of dedication they do. So he throws himself into his work, which is what you want in an actor. The issue is, is that outside of the celebrity and all that, these people are traumatized. But this is what I'm trying to say is like, what if you had a world of actors, artists, and creators that didn't have an encumbered expression by Satan. What would your art then be like? Would it all be dystopian, nihilistic, um, virtuous? Or would it start showing me things that make me feel deeply, maybe even things that are uncomfortable about myself, but change me? You look at all the movies that you remember and want to go back, Shawshank Redemption, even though it's a story about prison, that's about freedom. That's about love. It's about self-love, an act of self-love. Won't, won't give in to authority. Uses his mind to, to, to be able to escape and learn. Do you remember the piano? Huh? The piano. I, I was thinking of the piano. That moved me as a child like you wouldn't believe, but that's so beautiful mm-hmm. without saying much. Without saying much, right? And it's, it's show business, right? Show business. <laughs> they say they, they like to focus on the business, but it's showing you. It's not telling you. It's mm-hmm. showing you and allowing you to feel something with a thought and an emotion that is not preached to you. It's shown to you in the scene. And good mm-hmm. craft, good storytelling is a series of psychological events that are weaved into a structure that Robert McKee and Judith Weston and a whole bunch of other people have told you what to do. And somehow these multimillionaire paid writers can't follow their craft of what's worked for the last hundred years. But that's not our problem. Our problem, our problem is not their problem. Our problem is creativity, building of networks. You've got the online distribution. You guys can start doing collaborative endeavors together rather than all these exclusive little, you know, I'm a filmmaker and I'm amazing and all this kind of like put the ego down. The ones of you that know how to create and do things, do them. Don't wait for these people. Put the network together. Put the studio together. I'm making a studio. I'm building a studio. Not, not, not a big studio, a 21st century studio using virtual production software, the Unreal Engine. 
and I'm going to create a studio that I can scale to create the greatest independent films in the country from all of the best artists around the country. Now, from this show, I'm going to get tons of submissions like, yeah, read my script. Like, no, that's not what I need right now. <laughs> I want to read your script, but but I'm not. I, I'm, if they don't have it, make it themselves. Correct. This is what I'm trying to say. Don't rely on somebody else to do it for you. You have the ability to put it together today. Right. You don't need a lot of money anymore. No. And the audience, kids. The yeah, audience. Sorry, I'm. The audience cares about. Look, yes, does it need to be in focus? Sure. It doesn't need the latest camera. Nobody gives a damn. My films that I made 12 years ago are playing in over 70 countries around the world to this day. American. English language stories with Spanish subtitles, <laughs> okay, in some countries. But my point being is that they're playing 10 years later. There's no marketing. There's no stars. Why? Because the story, I didn't say, let, let me just tell you, I know what my flaws are in my films. Okay, I do. But I'm saying there's themes in there and there's something that's trying to come through that's being said. And that's why it stays timeless. Divine is timeless. You know, it's a wonderful life. 80 years later, it's timeless. Citizen Kane's timeless. Chinatown's timeless. Driving Miss Daisy, Shawshank Redemption. Why? Why? There's universal truths in there. They're divine. Anyway, okay. And for That's enough. I've probably overspoken. For, for those who like comedies, truth and comedy. <laughs> oh. <the> <laughs> comedy is like the number one. Yeah, that's the truth teller right I there. Like the humility. Show. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and real terror too yeah. yeah i love all the solution based how we're wrapping this up a little yes bit. yes um and truthfully would you say in your words that truthfully the most basic of solutions is going in the heart it's yes forgiveness and love boom trifecta heart forgiveness love yep. change the world i mean is it that simple is it is it that simple it's even what the luciferians will tell you if you listen very carefully Oh, that's true. Ooh. Yeah. So if I if I take it from the authority of running the world here, not the authority of all, but if I look at, I just have to look at them and whatever they believe, they're telling you the truth uh, according to their point of view, but they'll tell you everything that's true. Mm. So I look at them and they and they know it all goes through the heart and and they and they know what the mind can do, and so they attack you at both places of your thoughts mm -hmm. and your feelings. To provoke you that's what the dark side does that's what the emperor sith lord and vader did to luke in return of the jedi is it true do you think yeah. if an audience member's watching they're like gosh i'm really stuck in this system i got sludge i can't get out of it would the first step be to ground and unplug and just like get back to their breath and their heart <laughs> yes like my first, my first recommendation would be to, um, if you're, if you're tied in, let's just say I was tied in completely to this and I had to work and I had to be online all day, um, go through your phone. I mean, I'm just saying, start with your phone, delete all the apps that you don't use, delete, uh, take off all the notifications that you can live without. Like, like if it's Snapchat or whatever, whatever, anything that you get a little notification, that is a Pavlovian bell that is teaching you to look at your phone three to 400 times a day. Okay. That's a, that is a behavioral conditioning program. Trust me on this. What's coming down the pipeline for the, for the corporate class is going to be ugly with what they have in store to change your behavior through apps. So just understand they've been doing this for 20 years, turn off all your notifications get outside, go for walks. If you can walk for 20 to 40 minutes a day, anytime, where it's safe, do it, get outside, um, stop watching TV, stop going on in the internet and looking at headlines and stories about all the bad things. If you're going to do that, like this is what I'm saying, awareness. Mm -hmm. Go, all right, I'm reading about Ukraine or I'm reading about whatever it is that the new flash in the pan issue is that they want me to pay attention to to read. All you have to do is go, okay, what's the value in this for me? Mm. Okay, and then, and then, because you're putting a discerning layer of awareness on that, you will always have to check that every time. And you may have a lot of guilt and shame associated with that, right? Before you're like, I don't want to look at it, you know, but you got to put it down. But at least, at least break your appetite mm -hmm. for it and then try something else. And then when you become anxious, 
try to go act and do something outside of running right back into it. Because that's the real key is that when we get into that freedom zone, we're like, ah, it's too fun. It's too good. It's too good to be true. And I got to run back into this crap again. And I do it too. I've done it on many, many levels before with relationships as well. It's too good to be true. I got to do something to sabotage it. And, and, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm saying it's all the same thing. Um, that is so important to unplug. I think also really getting in touch with your human feelings. Don't try to go outside for a spiritual experience because I can tell you as somebody who's, I mean, I've talked to other MK ultra survivors. I'm not a MK ultra. I mean, I, I would be like a, a man of this time, right? I and mean, I'm saying not a man, but a person who is, had a very unique experience to be able to bring this to you. I, I don't know how other, I couldn't have lived another life to be able to tell you all this, right? I'm just telling you, like I, I've, I've added it up. Like I've had a charmed life, but I've had a lot of horror and a lot of trauma and a lot of sadness and tragedy and sorrow. And I can tell you something, none of that is more powerful than your heart and your mind and your imagination, including an entire lifetime of that. And the bottom line is this, if you don't give up, you won't fail. 100%, 100% you won't fail. And um, I don't know, there's so much more I could say, but it's starting, start somewhere. That's the key. Start somewhere and scale up from that. And you're going to have to go through, you know, individually, there's iterations of things that they'll be useful at one moment, and then you'll have to evolve it to something else or put it down and, and, and try something else. This is creativity. This is imagination in steps. It feels like work at first. It does. It does. But once you get it to become more routine, where you're using that part of your body in that time, this precious time that you only have so much of every day on your groundhog day that you get to come up with and, and reimagine the world. And if you allow yourself to be caught up in all the story and all the drama of stuff, like there's drama you have to deal with in your life. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I was like, oh, this all sounds nice. But you have to work five minutes in where you can every day. Every day, five minutes. If it's 20 minutes going to the gym, 20 minutes you show up at the gym and just sit there. But you make the effort to put on the pants and the shirt and the shoes and you get the whole mindset going and you go as far as you can go every single day and you're going to find out that you'll go farther than that 20 minutes you ever imagined if you train yourself this is subconscious mind reprogramming this is undoing mk ultra yeah and the process will get easier the stronger you you get your mind and your heart yes. the more you hit that drama and you'll be able to traverse it much easier yes ma'am Individual, individual journey. Yeah. I mean, yes. I've always used that. I love the, how you talked about, you know, if you want to work out, just even if just go, just go to the gym, put the clothes mm -hmm. on and get there. You know, even if we're looking at um, eating habits, you know, I've always done that instead of saying, I'm not, I'm going to have no sugar for a month. I take it, I take it to a meal at a time. I'm going to have no sugar for breakfast. Yep. I have no sugar for lunch. And attainable so, goals. Yes. Attainable, attainable goals. goals. So and it's it, to the bottom line is, Every moment in our lives, we are provided with a choice. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that each time we're presented with that, I'm going to choose X versus Y, you know, and yes. just looking at that, that, you know, yes, I did a win in that one choice. Now, then the next time it was presided, then just focusing, I'm going to do a win for that. And then when you look back, it's like, oh my goodness, I've actually gone to the gym every day for 45 days and I gave up bread and sugar. You know, it's just, then right. you go back and you realize how far you've come and it's now a pattern inside. Correct. And the then it's pattern, it. Yeah. Go ahead. Heidi. Oh, I was just saying when that pattern gets stronger too, you can recognize how movements are weaponized and meant to segregate you. You go, Oh, I'm not going to subscribe to that. And you carry on. That's <laughs> you right. don't get lost in the tumble of you're the anomaly in the matrix that's saying, uh Oh, something's not yeah. right. Not Something's right not right there. here, but I better pay attention to see what this is. Oh, she happens to be a really yeah. nice person and is not yelling at me and judging me and condemning me to hell and telling me that I'm some godless leftist, you know, like, you know, but, I, but I'm saying it's like, you're the anomaly in the matrix that's going, no, I'm, 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 I'm team human, you know, I'm like, <laughs> <Take it up. laughs> and 
being mindful that the children are watching you. If yes. you are an adult in this power of healing and able yes. to navigate and get stronger and stronger, the children are going to watch. They need the adults right now, secure, yes. strong. And they need safe. you healed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they need you healed because in order to make this a safe world for all children, which is really what this needs to be. And I invite people to look up um, on the United People Foundation, the Declaration of Peace. This is from Ronald Bernard's group. Um, I'll give you a link to that so you can give it to him or, or however you wish. Yeah. Maybe you wanted to plug too. I actually took this from one of your shows, the Alice Miller. Which oh, yes. Her books yeah. might help a lot of people out there, I think. Yes. So before you have her books, if you go to Alice Miller's website, she's dead. She died in 2011. Uh, I, I did have some contact with her and her assistant because I did a movie on child abuse called uh, Memories of a Lost Love uh, in uh, 2010. And um, Alice Miller's work, Alice Miller and Lloyd DeMoz. Lloyd DeMoz is a psychohistorian, and I actually think that we'll be seeing more psychohistorians in the future um going forward but alice miller and lloyd demise um their work is invaluable they were 40 to 50 years ahead of time she grew up i'll just give you a background just a little bit she grew up in nazi germany uh, um, in austria during the invasion and she left and uh she saw all this you know happen and manifest in front of her and she had a curiosity obviously but she was also abused by her mother. She did abuse one of her sons. There was, there's documented about, he's talked about it, but it doesn't nullify her work. And the reason why I'm saying this is because her lived experience is so valuable for what her self-discovery of what she went through. She was, she went up against Sigmund Freud. Mm -hmm. Sigmund Freud, who said the Epidus complex about, you know, children wanting to have sex with their parents and eliminating the, the mother, if it was, the, you, know, you know, the really creepy stuff about, you know, what a two and three year old is supposedly doing here and wanting to replace mommy and daddy, you know, and insert themselves in the relationship. Okay, well, everybody needs to hear this right now. Alice Miller was the one 50 years ago who said that she went back and researched Freud when he was going to do his research. And what his research showed was a high level association between depression and suicide in children and sexual trauma abuse in the mother and father. This is a hundred years ago, okay? He saw a correlation, a higher correlation between suicide and depression in children and abuse from their mother and father. He went to his mentor, his mentor told him, nah, that's not what's happening. And he delayed the publication of that report. Okay. And, and this is a long story, but short story of this is he, he didn't publish that report. And by doing so, he missed his opportunity to put that in the record. In doing that, he listened to the person who had a son himself who hung himself and committed suicide at 12 or 13 because his father was having sex with him. That was Freud's mentor who had him not publish the correlation between childhood suicide and depression with child sexual abuse by the parents. The man who told him not to publish this was the very man who did that to his own son. So understand we've missed a hundred years of that truth. Alice Miller's truth in this uh, regard is she came out and said, this is false, that the child does not desire the parent, that it's the parent who, whose own unconscious parenting from their childhood is what they're imprinting and downloading into the child, their own helpless and defenseless selves that they're seeing in front of them for the very first time. And then they're seeing the reaction of that helpless and defenseless child for the very first time, which is them. It's a mirror back to them. And that is unconsciously popping up all of the anger and the trauma responses from back then. And they punish the child. And so, and she goes into the depth of this with drug addicts and everything else that you can imagine, but drama, the gifted child, the body never lies and for your own good. She's got seven books out there, but those three are the key. And you go to her website and you can read all about the 12 roots, uh, the roots of violence and the 12, 12 uh, things that she has listed there. They're universal. They apply to all of us. And if you scale them out now, um, you see the whole world. You, you can see the whole world materializing in front of you. Now, yeah. yeah, Alice Miller's work is groundbreaking. Lloyd DeMoz is for psychohistory. Um, 
Uh, and I would say that matrix re-imprinting EFT, emotion freedom technique, tapping, um, EMDR, uh, any kind of trauma recall where you can separate uh, the emotion and isolate the emotion from the memory. Uh, that's where this therapy goes to break the bond between the old feeling of the past and the thought that is created that, that, um, prison in a sense, that wall of that prison and it dissolves it. So you don't have the memory and which is really the feeling associated with that guilt and shame of the act that is carried over into your adult life. And she didn't know how to stop that, but she knew that this was the beginning of understanding that by understanding it alone, you couldn't necessarily heal, but you would at least prevent yourself from the worst abuses that you were doing prior. And so I think the other side of that is the spiritual equation, which is what you all bring in, which is that loving care. And she talked about this the last thing I want to say about this. She talked about this as having a loving witness, a compassionate witness in, in modern day, there's a lady by the name of L Bradley. She's up in um, Canada and what she uses in, as part of her technique is compassionate parenting mirroring um, back to the inner child within us. That's really what we're talking about. Healing here is the inner child is wounded and it's the first time that they've ever been in a setting where there's a person that can feel with them, have empathy and in modern day psychology, that's forbidden, right? You're not supposed to care. You're supposed to observe and give them strategy and work it out. But what she was talking about was she need, you need a helping witness. So those who are maybe therapists today that have started down this path of understanding and you're getting all these people asking, why the hell is the world falling apart? And what can I do? It's like, learn these new therapies because you can heal people. You don't need them. The, the psychology is to suck all this money out and basically tell you shrink your head and put you back out into the system and say, good job, go for it. Or like a Tony Wor Robbins workshop, you know, you're going to pay $5,000 and he's going to pump you full of like, you know, positivity and all this stuff. And it's all about going back out and serving the system. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, <laughs> with that being said, your work's cut out for you. <laughs> Don't go to authority. <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible. It is possible and we can do it together. That's the thing. It's yeah. not done alone. We're, um, you know, we're reaching people now that we couldn't reach in our own lives and, and whatever it means today, whatever seeds we plant today, star seeds or otherwise, we want people to, to take that and just go with it and run with it yourselves and be the, be the model, be the example of the very thing that you love. Anyway. Yeah, that's perfect way. John, what's the best way that everyone can find you, view your work, view your work, your movies? Okay. So if you want to see any of my movies for free, go on Tubi.com and you can look up Edgar Michael Bravo. That's the writer director. A Child's Voice is up there. Uh, Game Day will be up there. That's my latest one. That's a great one. Um, one Hour Fantasy Girl. All, all of his films are on there. There's a couple of other films that I didn't produce with him that's on there, but but all of those movies are there. Um, you can go to no restrictions, ent.com. No restrictions with an S, E N T, entertainment abbreviated. Uh, all of our movies are there. You can also message me there if you want to write me an email. I get all emails through our website there and the contact form. Uh, and if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at no restrictions with an S. Um, Instagram is probably the place that I'm most active, sometimes Facebook, uh, but really Instagram, Twitter, Gab, that kind of thing. Thank you so much, John. Thank you guys. And I know a chat, I, I know a blab a bit, but it's really exciting to finally get to talk to people where I don't have to talk politics all day and, and go through your, all the your things. Your blab that... is healing blab. So thank you well, for having me. I, <laughs> I have your approval. Thank you. No, I, I mean, I try. I really do. I really, I, I got into this. Um, I, let me just say this. I know that they could kill me in any minute. Um, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and put out a hit on you like that. And um, boy, did I step into it, right? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm sitting here going, you know, I had to go through a lot to get here. And I'll just tell you this: wherever you measure yourself, you didn't go through all this crap to go down. You came here to defend life. You came here to defend God's children, and that's what I'm here to do with my last dying breath. And I'm going to give it my all until I can't anymore. Mm. 
So if you can commit to doing that and making this a safe world or all the children, it doesn't matter what you do in your lifetime, you will have done more than anything that was ever asked of you from any authority, except God, the father. So yeah, I appreciate you all. I, I, I wish I had a podcast these days to bring you all on so I could ask the questions, shut up and, and not talk. Um, but I, but I do hope to, but I do hope to see you all again and, and Abby too. Um, because, and I'm saying Abby, you're a part of Heidi. I'm just saying, I'd, I'd love to see you all again. Uh, and, and just hang out with you too. Cause I think you're really great people. And I'm so glad to know that you're out there in the Hollywood community, at least trying to spread some love and joy out there. Flip it light. Yeah, flip it light and find the others. So yeah. <laughs> we're doing what we got to do. Yeah. It's about the children. Save the children. This is what so many of us are here for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we got this. And I'm sure we'll collab again or work again. I would love that awesome. very much. We're all yeah. creatives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. All Thank right. you all.